one said you could touch. Welcome everybody to Bayonetta 2, the oddball of the Wii U lineup this year. Um, oddball as in, you got, you know, Super Mario 3D World, you got Mario Kart 8, and, you know, Super Smash Bros. Wii, uh, Wii U is coming out next month, and now, Bayonetta 2. A little bit different, but, um, we're gonna get right into this. Um, so, play the original, did not beat it, though, and don't remember a crap about it, so... Note that. Um, I'm going to start from the beginning. Uh, first two recordings uh, didn't go so well. We'll play that aside. You know, past is in the past. I learned from it. <laughs> Became a better person because of it. No, okay, not a better person. But I learned from it. So we're going to start with the records of time in the end. Um, if you're wondering what the third climax means. Um, so first climax is easy mode. Second climax is normal. And third climax is hard because I am a masochist. I'm also a Cubs fan. Makes sense. So, we're gonna get right into this. Loading screens. DNA. Nothing. <laughs> Very Assassin's Creed-like without seeing your character model. So, Bayonetta 2. Um, gotten a lot of good review scores with the exception of that one, uh... Was it Polygon? I don't remember who gave him a... In a universe of light and dark, where perception is reality. Um, forget who gave him the bad score. Because it was overly sexualized and it threw it in your face. We'll see how that... Eh, you know, stuff like that. But, we'll see how bad, bad or good it is. Alright, so that's probably Janine. <clears throat> All right, so throws you right into battle, and by battle I mean a cuts or a one of those scripted sequences that you can't lose. I'll try to st stay quiet during these parts. Obviously. The three worlds all needed rulers. Most of all, ours. And the one that ruled the chaos became known as Ace. Yeah, there's something going in the foreground here. Um, somebody may want to take care of that. Nope. Okay. So these opening cinematic sequences and the uh, it's usually in spectacle fighters where you're like just thrown into the battle without any controls. I don't know that if it does good for the game. Oh, I'm in a giant robot. Because what game it doesn't start off with giant robots with moon symbols on their back. These observations became Aesir's power. Aesir's eyes were truly the eyes that created the world. However, Aesir pitied the humans for their naivete and lack of free will. So the power he wielded was split into two equal halves and entrusted each to humanity's instincts. The right eye of light and the left eye of darkness. So what you're saying is lefties are darkness and full of evil. So what you're saying is Ned Flanders is evil. I knew it was all an act. Okay, so... So what I was talking about in terms of spectacle, and I know he's talking, but it's going to go on and on. Um, so it throws you into the game, and this is a very technical fighter, especially at harder difficulties. Um, it's not a button masher. You can try to button mash. It's not gonna work. Trust me. It's not gonna work um, So to throw you into the in the mat into the game without really any control set up or anything and just to start attacking things It gives you a really false sense of what the game is going to be um, And I don't like that. I, I understand this is for cinematic purposes to start up the story to set up the epicness of the adventure and the Manta death ray here um but I think it does the game a disservice um, from the gameplay play portion of it. And I think the gameplay portion of this is 
and the Bayonetta 1 was excellent. Very refined controls, very te technical. Uh, combos really did do a lot. The witch time was done well, rather well. Um, so... Those are some big ass earrings. Oh, I want one. I want I want a double-edged sword like that. Not like a double-sided sword, but like the what do you, what do you call those things? Well, at least you're the silent type. How does she I forget how she how does she trigger the guns on her shoes? Up, oh, she got how did it do damage like that with guns? What? Obviously, this means something, but we're not going to tell you right now. So now we're in the present day. And forgive me if I'm missing part of the Bayonetta story here That to, for some context. I honestly don't remember it. I didn't beat the game, but I honestly don't remember it. Upside a few details. I could have played the first one again. I was doing other things. Uh, with my monocle. Why do I feel that they're not going to perish? My dear sweet child, at last you have fulfilled your promise to me. Fear not, for I am always watching over you. Are you now? That's a little creepy, actually, to be honest with you. But the right eye of light was lost from the world forever. And the lefties took over. Lefties are not evil. Except for Ned Flanders, he's still evil. So, that is the opening sequence. Obviously, not a lot of gameplay there. So now we're going to get into the world of chaos. The prologue here. Introduction and controls and more cutscenes. Woo. People! It's Christmas. Is this downtown New York or down? I do like how they in in introduce the uh, the credits here. The make them as part of the world. I like I like that transition. Also, note that symbol. It's going to become important later. Team Little Angels. Has anybody ever seen one of those under a street sign like that? I, I haven't. Going for realism. Pshh. Ah, Hideo Kama Kamaya is 30% off. And Yuse Yuseke Hashimoto is about to be crushed. And we have a familiar face that we can't see. Enzo. And Bandita in white. Now, I know that Bayonetta has the ability to create like clothes via her hair, but I wonder. So I wonder if she has all other clothes only because it's her hair is only black. She would have to dye it every time she needed another shade of clothes. Those shines on that present texture. Would anybody indicate that she dressed like a nun at any point? Because I I can't say for a fact that anyone would. And no one is questioning the crazy guy talking about angels and devils and especially offing angels. I mean, that's not strange whatsoever. There's got to be a better way to carry this stuff. I mean, don't you have a car or something? He does. Done and done. Let's go home. Hey, wait a second. I ain't done here. If I don't get what I came for, I'm gonna be the biggest mutt in the city. Bark, bark. And what is it that you came to fetch, mutt? Eh, be 
you funny. I know better than to tell you a damn thing. I'll never hear the fucking end of it. And Janine makes her appearance. <laughs> Physics. Necessary. <laughs> no one here is taking paying any attention to this. Uh, and of course it lands perfectly for them. I do like the goggles though. You always know how to make an entrance job. And then, okay, you caught it and you just throw it on the ground. Okay. Okay. What is that? An Angel Slay Angel Slayer? Uh, <laughs> I get it. I still haven't quite figured out how a broke bumbling wise guy managed to turn himself into a semi respectable family member. Forget about it. Ah, Boston. <laughs> the real controversy of Bayonetta 2. Over overplay of stereotypes of Bayonetta or of Boston. Overplayed Boston. Our friends in Paradiso are far too quiet. I'm sure you've noticed. I like the glasses. I like the portion on the glasses. That uh, it does give it a unique style. I'm actually curious why more glasses don't do that. Oh, great. Speaking of the unit platinum stars, they're gonna fly right over. Convenience! Woo! You lost your you lost your hat there. You you you're so you're so Surprised by the platinum stars when you when you have Angel and Devon hunters right next to you. We'll talk later. I'll see you back home. Did you just don't, don't you guys know what cell phones? Do you just come for this purpose purpose alone? And we're gonna cause traffic mayhem. Okay, yeah, mm-hmm. This is this <laughs> people just walk by like oh, that's normal. Normal as ever. I mean, that happened to me just the other day. What's the matter with you? <laughs> What's the matter with you? <laughs> We're getting into Italian now, Boston. Ugh. A bird. I like this guy. He's just like, uh huh. Uh huh. I'm not going to really do anything for you. I'm just going to stay right here. Do absolutely nothing. You want one of those big jets? Uh, huh? uh, okay. Biggest? What, what are you pointing to? <laughs> what are you looking at? I don't know what's going on. Oh, here we go. Uh, are, are you really still worried about the present here? No one's noticing this. No one's stopping. That the hat's gotta fly off. You know I try to avoid doing this in my Sunday best. I really do like kicking jets in the air. Alright, so we're, it looks like and your Sunday best looks ruined. <sighs> Damn jets. And we're introduced to our first enemy type, the acceptance angels of the third spear. And hopefully I don't die this time. I didn't die the first time. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so yeah, the over-sexualization part. So like, parts like this. Okay. A little bit... I can see people's concern with it. I know that's being in a sexual in nature. So, but, again, if you're buying this game, you, you better come to have expected this. Um, but I like it for the combat. I love games like Devil May Cry, and, yep, yeah, we're gonna ride the horse. We are gonna ride the horse, and... Hence my wonder about if, there, if some of those concerns are valid. 
Gr granted, you again, like I said, you, if you came into this game not expecting that, you're a fool. <laughs> and everybody, attack the same point. Where did she get the guns, by the way? How is this jet still alive? It's like getting like all this shit thrown at it and all right, so I want I want to go on record here. So it gives you an interesting tutorial here um, of the first of your uh, control. I mean, of your controls, your punches and your kicks. Now, if I use the touch screen, you can actually touch to combat. This is one of those things with the Wii U and its controls that I I wonder like, huh? Was it only done for the sake of this? I mean, okay, so l l let's give it the benefit of that. Okay, so touch to punch a quick enemy. Okay, sure. Let's go to the next one. Touch the enemy for a powerful kick. Wait, is there a different way I'm supposed to touch? Um. Mm, okay, so that already to me tells me. Hold on a second. That that doesn't really work. So kick is actually A. And one of the things I loved about Bayonetta was that you can see on the side there is the, all the list of combos. It can show you what you've been doing. So let's see. Say. So I love I love I love those kind of nature ones. Now. You try not to be like so, you know, combat oriented in terms of combos. You just want to keep those enemies down, but you know, it is sort of satisfying to see um, what what can, can come out of it. All right, A to hold fire guns, X for the punch one or the pans, A for the Y or A for the Y, A for the legs. Still want to know how she fires the gun. I, I don't remember how she does that. Also, I think, yeah, Y is just a regular one. And so ZR to avoid. Now, unlike other games, and and the slide controls, the slide does seem to work reasonably. It also seems to work in terms of um, which way I want to go. So I'll give them credit for that, but I'm not going to be using the country controls. Now, this is what makes Bayonetta interesting, is the dodge at the last second, and you get this little time gap in terms of everything is slowed down um to attack your enemies with and that that's interesting so it really adds to the spectacle fighter portion of this um which again is is a big part of this game it's a spectacle fighter all right so we're in the game okay already took damage that's good gotta be patient There we go. And so, 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 when I mention that Bayonetta is sort of weird on the Wii U, I mean, graphically, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about power and the power of, okay, what do you have to work with? Um, is the game dumbed down because of it? And I don't know that. Are we talking about the heels for the guns right now? Does a barrel just fly off like that? I, I, I'm not a gun person. Back to Enzo. Santa Claus! Black Santa Claus! Rome. It's our... Rodan! The lighter on command. Don't want anyone offering you the sacrifice so, before you pay the tax. I'm fucking believable. Because this is absolutely within the laws of physics. Oh, yep, he's driving inside the... Okay. Makes sense. Perfectly makes sense. There's... 
got to be a better way to get her, her guns. <laughs> now I admit, guns look pretty cool. I love the color scheme. And when I thought to myself, why aren't other guns like that nowadays? And then I realized, well, wait a minute. Kids love these kind of color things. You probably don't want to draw attention to it like that. Sometimes I can be a little bit silly. I believe. He, he believes. Also like this. I'm going to catch it. I'm going to catch the... No, he's not going to catch the car. Of course not. He's going to catch the jet. And absolutely necessary. All right. So... So this is probably a good place to stop um, for the first episode, um, only because, well, it's a good place to stop, and I'm at the 20-minute mark. So next time on Bayonetta 2, we will get back in, we'll get into the real combat of the game. Um, see, how, uh, see how this story unfolds, and start getting into more of the intricacies of the combat in the game. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hey, thanks for watching. If you have a chance, leave some feedback and comments below. If you liked the video, hit that like button. And if you want more content like this, hit that subscribe button. This is Dragnik signing off, hoping that gaming brings as much fun to you as it does for me.